is Thursday. It is March 21st. It is 2024, I think. I'm here tonight with Matty G. Uh, just the two of us, just a double act tonight, um, getting towards the end of the season. We're going to talk about some tanking teams, which players might have value for the rest of the season. We're going to do some hypothetical player matchups for next season and quickly touch on our squads from the early industry mock draft that we ran last week. This is Fantasy Basketball International. This is Balls Deep. I'm the type to get shit done. You're the type to observe. March matters to my speakers, but today's November 23rd. Got something loud in the blunt, yeah. I don't say what I want, yeah. Probably somewhere sunny and tan. Foreign women in the sun, yeah. That's all that I need. That's all that I need. That's all that I need. Come my brothers with me. Welcome to the Balls Deep podcast, part of the Fantasy Basketball International Podcast Network. I'm Adam King, your host at Adam King 91. Joining me tonight, as I won't say as always, but as usual, is Maddie G from Insight Fantasy. Maddie, you were off last week. You were on camp with. I was on uh, camp. A bunch of, of kids out in the bush somewhere. So we had D Mac filling in admirably for you. Uh, he was a gem, absolute he, gem. He was. How was the camp? Let's start with that. I the camp was amazing. And I actually I'm I consider myself an archer. Like, you know, hypothetically, where you think that's a sport that I'd be good at. I'd love to do that. You know, it's like every single person alive when it comes to the Olympic games, we can sit back there and watch gymnastics that we've never done in our life and be like, you know what? turned out of that time, that half pike a little bit fucking early, didn't they? And you, and you see, you know, I've always thought that with archery, like it's one of the things I hit and I have photographic evidence of it, Kingy. I hit a dead perfect bullseye last week, like straight, there you go, straight in the guts of it. There you go. And my class went absolutely bonkers ballistic and thought it was the coolest thing. So to, to that just as a bonding experience and, and paddling up and down a river, like yep. for half a day, just it's amazing, and you know it's the Aussie bush, so it's awesome, and it's tranquil, and it just yeah, miss basketball, but camping's pretty bloody great. Uh, it is, it is. I, I don't mind getting out and doing a bit of camping uh, as well. Plenty, plenty of space here in the country that we live yep. in. There's, there is. there's no shortage of space to go camping. Um, uh, what's what's okay? Here's a question back to you. What's one of those kind of sports where you've always been like, I love that. Oh, that's like oh, that's 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 a sport that I love. Uh I mean, I, I well, I love all sport. Um, the Olympics are my favorite time of that. Well, the year every four years, um, I usually yeah. take time off work when the Olympics are on, because um, usually the times are all weird and I have to stay up all night watching stuff. Um, yep. Sports I love watching that aren't on TV very much. Athletics and swimming. Um, I love watching both of those because I did them as a kid. Uh, sport that I I often think I, sh I could give that a crack and I reckon I'd be all right, lawn yeah. bowls. And I have Ooh. done a little bit of lawn bowls and, and, I've, and I've been told by people, you, you, like, you, you're not too bad at this given you've never played. Um, yeah, all right. So that, that's probably one and, and that's probably a sport along with golf that I'd like to ease into as I get older. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. I hear so, that. Golf. Yeah. Golf is one that I love doing. I just like to hit the ball. I love golf as well. Yeah, I love getting out and a couple of beers and just wandering around, um, hitting the ball. Goes in the water. Goes in the sand. Whatever. <laughs> Doesn't matter. That's not the point Doesn't, of it for me. It's not. The, it's, not it's not the point of it whatsoever. It's a hundred percent. Just. To, it's just to, to hang out with mates and have a good old time. I love that. That's right. That's right. Um, now you you really have no idea what we're talking about tonight. Um, other no, than I'm completely utterly <laughs> unprepared. But I did bring wine, so I'm okay. Wine, very good. I'm just on the uh, I'm just on the what Canadian clubs tonight. Oh, classic! Yep, a cla a, the a old, classic the old favorites. Yeah, that's that was uh, Australian summer for me when I was a young kid. Not yep. a kid, as you're not promoting underage drinking by any way, shape, <laughs> or form. But like. 22 to 23 year old, 23, four year old, Matt. Like when you'd hang yeah. out with the mates at the beach and the sunset would go down, down near Byron Bay, um, southern, like southern Gold Coast way down past Cool and Gadda or in Deba. Yeah. 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 Some Canadian clubs by the beach was was always in hand. And, I, and I've actually got a, a lemon crisp biscuit with me tonight. Oh, um, nice. We talked about our biscuits a few weeks ago. We and, did. We did and, talk about um, the biscuits. 
yeah, my wife um, surprised me with a few packets. They were on sale. Um, came that's home with cute. a few packets of bickies. So that was Mrs. Uh, Queen. That's why we call her Mrs. Queen, not Mrs. King. Very nice of her indeed. Uh, all right. So I just thought we'd look at. Uh, I've listed some teams here that are that are. I think we can categorise them as tanking now. They're they're not yep. really playing for anything. So. We'll just run through the team very quickly and touch on any players we think might have value for the rest of the season. Yep. Um, Love it. Yep. Agree. We can disagree. Um, whatever we want to do. Let's start with the Nets. Um, they're an interesting one because I actually don't think they're tanking. I just think they're really bad. Just, um, yep. <laughs> and there's no point for them to tank because they don't have their draft pick. Uh, yeah. There's no, so, there's no agenda for it whatsoever. There, there's no impetus for these guys to – to suck they've been they've just sucked this year they haven't lived yeah. up performance and i think it highlights the fact that i'm never taking mccall bridges again and this player who i love and who's still getting heavy consideration for team usa like yeah. when they're team usa together right now because of the game that he can bring it's the name that you don't really you know that you hear floating around and guys might be cut but it's just mate he, he has been where, did, where would you say he was at the beginning of this season? In all fairness, he was people getting him from the second round, third, fourth round. He wouldn't go past the fourth round. No, I, I mean, he was going too high in a lot of leagues. I probably yeah. had him in um, – I mean, I didn't get him anywhere because he was going above where I wanted to take him. I was probably comfortable taking him around top 40, but yeah. he was generally going inside the top 30. And I don't know what he is, top 90 this year maybe. I'm not sure. I'm actually. I'm. I'm bringing up to double check because he's flirted as well. He's flirted with top twenty-five value a couple of times, and then he's plateaued out. And yep, he is the hundred and nineteenth best player. Yeah. So uh, I, th Cam, I think if, yeah. if we'd Cam had a Johnson discussion was above him by four places. Yeah, yeah. If we'd had a discussion at the start of the year, which Bridges finishes higher this year, Mikhail or or Miles Bridges? I think it would have been heavily weighted towards Mikhail to Bridges, Mikhail. and it's actually Miles quite Miles. comfortably. Um, By a long way. He's in the yeah. – and he's, and, he's, and he's taken the foot off the gas. And yeah. this brings us to the next team here, the Hornets. Like, what are they doing? Well, they're still not very, very good, but they're going to continue to roll their guys out there. Miles Bridges, two-game week for the Hornets. So if you're in your week 21, I, I own him in a league that I'm in a semifinal four. You kind of got to grin your teeth and bear it. He's like one of the two – he's one of the two Hornets that you won't cut – in your rotations this week. Like you'll keep him and you'll keep Brandon Miller, but you're going to probably let go Nick Richards. Michich is a two-game stream, but you're going to get it elsewhere. I, I liked him and Kingy, I think you remember, it was just after the trade deadline, I said, I want to watch Michich more than Man. Um, yep. So Man came out the gates hot and I looked like a, people were like, ah, I was like, oh, just wait. And I've waited and been patient. And I think Michich is the guy that we can kind of lean on in Charlotte to get some value when he's on the wire. He's getting all the shots that he wants. He's getting some assists, some steals, decent percentages most of the time. So I think the player value for him is is probably sky high. Yeah, the yeah, the Hornets have got a few guys. Um back on the nets quickly, there isn't really a lot of value there, I don't think, because no. I don't think they're gonna rest guys. The only guy I'd probably be watching here is Dayron Sharp. Um yep. He Good. had eight and 17 with two blocks. He only needs 22, 24 minutes to, to be a top 80 player. Um, and Claxton is questionable. He is. I could see them not shutting Claxton down, but almost giving him sort of the, the Lowry Markinen treatment where he maybe plays and then sits Don't you say that. You, you take that back. Is in that 11 cat. I've got him as my center. You, you wheel that back and he can, he can rest his ass down in week 23 and 24. Yeah. I'm okay with Clacko getting oh, the, the last eight games of the season. Oh, I've got a left thing that's out yeah. of joint. But not until week 23, Kingy. Until right. then, Clacko is Clacko is in there. And I am – Dayron Sharp was on every single bloody watch list alive for me right now. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Hornet – just – and we'll move to the Pistons. But on the Hornets quickly, so you said um, – Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges, probably not dropping. I actually dropped Miles Bridges in one of my Ooh. leagues today. Um, it's a semi. I'm in a semi final. Yep. It's it's a league where I'm very guard heavy, so I need guard stats. That like that's yep. what I need. Um, I'm punting rebounds, punting blocks. So Bridges yep. is a really good fit, but yep. 
I'm hoping, and this was. Uh, I, is I it a tight race? Is it a tight? Is it nine cat? Like, what's nine. the cats? And is it tight? Yeah, and tight. Yeah, and, nine and cat, tight. Um, I'm leading six three at the moment, and I dropped him and I picked up um, Keon Ellis. So don't you mention he, that name either? We'll have a quick Keon Ellis conversation in a second. Yeah, and, and <laughs> I'm. Oh, I'm glad I did. I mean, Keon Ellis was pretty good today. All I want from him is threes and steals, and I got two threes and four steals, I think. And so, my opponent randomly picked him up like three, like two days ago, three days ago, ahead of the back to back. So the, the great value of the Kings today was that they're on that, you know, that back to back set. They've got yeah. the games for the rest of the week. He'd made one move, and that I think that was maybe his second move, but it was on a day that he needed it, and we're pretty tight because it's an eleven cat. Yeah. So I was like, all right, like I'll get him the second that the day the waivers open, I'll slide in and I'll get Keon. I actually didn't notice his squad because it was on I was on daily view and he'd already picked him up the day before. And I was like, you bastard. And the yeah. four steals today, the only guy that played for me, thank goodness gracious, was Ka uh, Kawhi Leonard who got my four steals back. And he was the only guy in my rotation that was on there today. Yeah, yeah, it was... Yeah, look, it, I mean, Keon's going to start for the rest of the season now, so I think he, he yep. probably ha has value there if, if you don't need points. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping that the league I'm in, we have a limited number of moves per week, so you can't just keep adding and streaming. So yep. I'm hoping that once Miles Bridges clears waivers, he's sitting there long enough for me to pick him back up for next week. Uh, um, if not, so be it. Um, I've got to get to the final first. So, and I, I don't know, I feel like Bridges, I know they have a four game week next week, but they're on, I think all four games are on high volume nights. So there's a chance you're going to have a full roster anyway. So maybe have, not having Bridges is not the end of the world. So anyway, yeah. we'll see if that comes back to bite me. Um, on to Detroit. Two players, Asar Thompson and Isaiah Stewart, both out for the season. Yeah, uh, I talked about this on, I think it was the show with Noah yesterday. We talked about Asar Thompson, and I said just keep an eye on this because he's missed four games with what they were calling asthma, and I, I thought you don't miss four games because of asthma. No. So, and, and sure enough, they came out today and said it was a blood clot that he's dealing with. So, um. Yeah, look, uh, hopefully everything is okay and he's good to go for next season, but he's out for the rest of this year along with Isaiah Stewart. So anyone in Detroit um, that, that we're sort of targeting now? Oh, I mean, if there was ever a time to love Jaden Ivey, it's it's now. And I know that he is still available in some 12-team leagues, so I definitely think it's time you, you bring Jaden Ivey into your lineup if you're a 12-teamer and he's still sitting there remarkably. And I even think he's... At a point, he starts to flirt with and warrant ten team conversation. I, I prefer. I, I like Jaden Ivey personally. Um, I think, and God forbid that we actually see a bit of a return to. Do we actually look for Evan Fournier minutes? Like this is, or we're we're literally living in a world with them where the guys like Shabazzi Metu are going to start getting some minutes. James Wiseman obviously gets a little bit of an uptick here as well, but um, Amude is going to get some minutes. Amudi, Amude, if I'm saying it right. Yeah, he's going to get some minutes. And um, I, I'm going to stuff up the other bloke. It's um, Evan Mambois. I haven't got to say it right because he's only been in a couple of games. But, like, this is what we are at with Detroit now. And it's not the mm. team we started with. And I think we see Cade almost get shut down in a couple of weeks too at this point. Yeah, there's a chance that they do at least ease him back and, and play him every second game. Um I think Fontecchio is an obvious one. If, if he's available, go and get Fontecchio. Although he's oh, been 100%. Injured as well. He's been injured the last three games. Yeah. So, I mean, Sasa was a guy that we liked, and then all of a sudden they're backing his minutes down, and Shabezi Metu and Fournier are getting minutes. So, yeah. I was surprised to the. I mean, Quentin Grimes, I'd love to see him get some more run, obviously, but, you know, he's out. He hasn't played. So, I think they're just very much just packing up the cart and, and wheeling it home to that number one pick next year. Uh, on the Grizzlies, a pretty similar situation here, knowing who's going to play from one night to the next. Um, Desmond Bain came back for whatever reason. Um, yep. and, fan service. And has played, lip, and has played a couple of games. I, although he wasn't great today, was he? I didn't even – I know I checked his his box score during No, he the game. wasn't. 
He, he wasn't no. good today. He wasn't as good as John Conshaw. He was better than John Conshaw. Let's put it that way. Uh, but Jaron Jackson Jr. has been great. When he's playing, Jaron Jackson's been playing fine. Like the massive blocks in numbers the other day, no blocks today, such as the life of being a Jaron Jackson Jr. owner this year. Uh, Santi Aldama, for me, has been one of the, the nice stream ads. I think he's become Mr. Consistency. Um, guys are picking up Jake Laravia, um, Jemison, um, and Giroux it seems to be the guys getting the most run there. Um, there's no one else that I'm really tr trusting, though, uh, probably apart from, yeah, Aldama and Laravia, because they're the guys who have been in the team a little bit. It's almost like you guys don't get to play with us all the time, but you're still on the team so you can get some more minutes. And, and minutes can equal value. Yeah, I think I'm the same. I think it's Concha, Aldama, Gigi Jackson, Yep. And Laravia. They're probably the four that I trust the most to, to play majority of games. Um, like someone like a Jordan Goodwin, when he plays, is worth looking yep. at, but he we just don't know when he's going to play. Um, Bain has played three straight now, I think. So who knows? He's probably likely to sit a couple. Uh, yep. So, yeah, they're probably the guys I'm, I'm targeting there as well. Uh, over to Portland. A little bit the same. Uh, I'm just assuming that Jeremy Grant is basically done for the season. Yeah. I think he'll play a couple more games, but I wouldn't be – if you, if you've got him on your team, I wouldn't be holding him, that's for sure. No, um, no real signs. Of, I, I thought this morning we were getting a, an Anthony Simons, maybe here we go, here's the shutdown uh, coming, but he played. He did. um, didn't do much uh, because they got blown out, but he did play. They're on a back-to-back, -back, I think, soon. So I wouldn't be surprised if he misses one of those. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there, there were a few names here, like Jabari Walker, Delano Banton, um, Tamani Kamara, Scoot, although Scoot's probably not available anywhere anymore, I wouldn't think. Yeah, um, yeah what, are you, what are your thoughts about Portland? They're not good. Uh, they're not good. They're very not good. They're very, they're very not good. And <laughs> it's a shame that we all saw this kind of coming in a way this year. But we also had hopes for the Portland Trailblazers being like a bit of a young and up and coming team. Like obviously when you're looking on your waiver wire and you see Kay Murray there and you're just going down and you're not looking at the photos and you're thinking mm. that you're getting Keegan, you're not. You're getting Chris Murray. But I think Chris is going to play himself into some value, not value, but I'm going to think he's going to play himself into some minutes. He started today. He did okay, 17-5-2 and a steal. Um, look, Matisse Thibel, he'll get some minutes. They they bring him in. He's even questionable. I think they just see him now as a, as a veteran. So they'll give him the veteran treatment and just wind him back. So I think Banton pretty much becomes the guy. And he's probably popped back up on a couple of wa waiver wires with Scoot getting some starts. And this guy was putting up like almost 40 pieces a couple like last week. Like he was filling up it with steals and some assists. So I think we just got to watch to see what happens with Scoot. And like you said, if they do shut him down, I think Banton becomes like obviously one of the hot properties there. San Antonio are, are an interesting oh team who who I think a, a little bit like um, Brooklyn. I don't think they're necessarily – well, there's no indication that they're shutting it down yet. No. I don't know. They Aren't gave they it going to, I guess – they gave it to the bloody Mavs yesterday. Mm, like, they did. Like, if, you, if you're going to take, maybe don't, you know, go out there and play Wemba Nyama 32 minutes against the Mavericks. Like, just to, you know. And his line, like, six blocks was impressive, sure. But if you look at the rest of it, it's not. You take away no. the blocks for, for a hot second, you'd think that's anybody in the world. 12, 11, 3, and 1. Like, oh, okay, 3 of 13, like it's like it's just a shit show in, in San Antonio. And I just think organizationally, if we look for a shift in the offseason, Champagne, but again, there's two Champagnes. The Wizards, yep. the just there's Julian and there's a Justin. Just know your Julians and know your Justins. That's all I'm gonna say. One of them plays with the Wizards, and one of them plays obviously with the San Antonio Spurs. So if you want a Champagne, you get Julian from the Spurs and you get Justin from the Wizards because they're the guys who seem to be getting the minutes in the burn right now. Yeah, we'll get to the Wizards in a minute. They're actually a very interesting team in terms of um, streaming at the moment. So, so yeah, look, I think for the Spurs, we're probably looking at 
like Sohan if he's available. Um, yep. Blake Wesley's been getting some minutes, Branham, but there's really no indication yet that they're going to sit Wemby or they're going to sit Trey Jones or Devin Vassell or anything. So at the moment, probably not a whole lot of value there, but let's revisit that in a week and maybe maybe things have changed a little bit. Um, over to Toronto. We, look, we don't know how long RJ Barrett's going to be out. Um, yeah. This this could be a rest of season thing. Yeah. It could be that he's back this upcoming week. We, we really don't know. Uh, Emmanuel quickly is also out for personal reasons, and I don't think there's a time frame on on when he'll return. Gary Trent, I picked him up in a league. Grady Dick, yeah. if, if he's available, he's probably not. Uh, Jordan Wara is the one I'd be watching. Um, yep. Because we saw him in Indiana last year have a, a good run of top 100 value. John Tay Porter was another one, but he uh, he left today's game, I think, but it was only an illness. So hopefully it's it's just a, a sort of a one or two day thing and he's okay. John Tay Porter, Jordan Wara are probably the two that I would be looking at at the moment. Anyone else there for you? No, those are the guys. And I'm just looking up Grady Dick in. Yahoo leagues. He's actually. I thought this was the case. He's actually gone down two percent in the last day, so he's gone back to ten percent rostered. Mm. It's like they just didn't get the right dick, um, and no one likes it when it's only one of eight. If you're only getting one of the eight possible inches of Grady, you don't want it. And uh, that was the experience of him today. So people just dropped him. They're like, "Oh, he's shit." Boom. And again, we always say, like Mally, I do a Tuesday show with him. And we always say that points are the sexy girl at the party. Like points are the thing that you see on yeah. your waiver wire. Like they just, and it's like, oh, 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 I'll pick you up. I'll, I'll, I'll get you in my lineup really quickly. But we're looking more for just that vapid points. And, and Grady's been chipping in some things here and there, but with more run, you go back a couple of weeks and he put together a good consistency, 18, 14, 7, 7, then 18, 18 again. He's chipping in some rebounds. The assists aren't really there, but he doesn't give you many turnovers. He gives you decent, like his free throw percentage is okay to bore you, but I guess he's the only, he's a rookie. They'll give him some burn down the stretch most likely, and, and that's where you can pick him up and get him back in. Uh, on to Utah. So we're almost at the end here. Um, Utah, another team, well, as I said, I talked about Mark a bit earlier. I think he's just going to be in and out for the rest of the season. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't drop him just yet, but it could get to that point, I think. Uh so outside of, of him, I mean, they're relatively healthy. Jordan Clarkson has missed a few games as well. Yeah. But Sexton has been playing really well. No indication yeah. that they're going to shut him down. The fact that John Collins got injured on that Anthony Edwards dunk but played today would indicate that they're happy to just roll him out yeah. as well. So probably a little bit like San Antonio, a little bit like Brooklyn, despite the fact that they're not very good, there's probably not – a lot of streaming value in Utah just yet until we get some confirmation that one or two of these guys might be shut down. And it's a really weird thing because you go back about a month or so ago and Utah was fringy like, are, are these guys going to go for the play-in? Mm. Like, is this – like? And, and now they've obviously slipped. They've lost their last three games. They're 29 and 40, so they're seven games behind uh, the Golden State Warriors in that position. But you look at the West – the West is so stacked, and the real question is, is Utah ever going to be better than this? And the answer is really no. Like, you look at Houston. We all say they're a good team. Obviously, they've lost out with Alper and Shangoon going down, and they're not even in the eight. And then you look at the top eight team, the top 10 teams in the Western Conference, and you're like, are these just guys like the most mid team you can think of, but not even mid? They're like, are they low mid? And they kind of are. Like yeah. Lowry's obviously been a, a second round start all year. Colin Sexton's been revitalized. Keontae George, revelation. People here, he's already going to go up drafts really well next year. But Senzabar and Taylor Hendricks, they'll get burned. They're the two guys you want to keep your eye out at. And Chris Dunn is a good little stream option for some assists and steals, I think, is, is a guy you can pick up and with some confidence. And then Washington. Uh, like we said, quite a lot of value here. Marvin Bagley yeah. has missed quite a few games. Tyus Jones has missed a few now. Kuzma is in and out. Uh, Denny Avdia has missed quite a few. Rashawn Holmes, who cares? Um, <laughs> Landry Shamit. So so they actually have got some injuries and, and have shown that they're happy to just not play 
their entire starting five, basically. Um, so Corey Kispert, I think he's probably just a must roster at this point. Yep. Jordan Poole as well, despite his struggles, um, should be rostered. And then it's it's guys like you said, Justin Champagne, Patrick Baldwin, Jared Butler, probably not Johnny Davis. I mean, that'd be really scraping the bottom of the barrel if we, That's if we just were to hear going low. That's um, going really well. But yeah, Champagne, Baldwin, and Butler, I think, are all guys to consider, even in standard leagues at the moment. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I'm looking at their roster because I picked up uh, Kispert um, early this week, and it's a shame they've gone obviously down with the injury to um, Bilal Kulabale. So I think Kispert becomes almost one of their their focal points. They've got two more games left this week. There's the Friday, but they don't play on the low volume Sunday. So I'm going to look to bring in. I'm going to look to bring in Justin for a couple of games and then pick up another ad at the end of the week on that Sunday, just because I like that stretch and I've got the slot for him. So I think he's been, he, he played really well the other day and he fills it up across. He's obviously playing to be considered for an NBA team. He wants to show his stuff mm-hmm. in there. So I'm, I'm going to bring the guy into my team um, and, and very happily so. On to an Aussie question. Now we usually do one of these, um, and I've already yeah. got one ready for next week. <clears throat> so Ooh. if you need to, if you need Ooh. to plan and do some research, it's favorite chocolate bar for next. Oh for next no, week. God. we could make this band one next week because band talk could take me for ages. Chocolate bar is one and done. Boost. No, chocolate bar for me is is a pretty in depth discussion. So. Oh, I have to. Oh, geez, actually, is it? Oh, is it Australian chocolate or just chocolate in general? Just chocolate in general, I think. Um, oh, geez, I'm gonna have to whittle that list down. Yeah, but let's do Aussie band because oh. I, I I prepared a list on my little. Oh my, there's, there's a list. Oh, it's I'm, a post-it I'm, list. It's not much of a list. It was more so that I didn't forget anyone. Um, okay, are we just like saying favorites, or do you have a number one with the bullet? And well, is there like a list of subsequent or? I think it's probably changed at times throughout my life. So like when I was younger, Fair. I would have had a favourite and then through my 20s and 30s and then now. Um, so I don't know if I could say I have a favourite, but yep. I'll work through my list. Do you have a favourite? Yeah. Yeah, I do. You do. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have so some very I- emotionally strong ties to my favourite. So okay. it's just that for a reason. And then there's like a list of like there's one with the bullet and yep. then there's like this these – I'm like like the guy with the strings following around like the mystery being like, and then there's this one and then there's this one. Yeah. yeah. That's how I musically I feel. So I've got I've got John Farnham uh, on my list. Oh. Just because yeah, I think you have to. If you're Australian, yeah. you have to have John Farnham. Um yeah. I've got A C D C well, a lot huge. of classic songs. Um, so these are the ones that aren't definitely aren't the top, but I, I just like them. Uh, Crowded House. So some of these are older Australian bands, and, and so anyone that is watching, unless you were around in the eighties and nineties, I'm, I'm literally writing down names now and crossing out to be like, yes, no, I can say that I can't. This is great chat. Go, go, go. Um, okay, so Crowded House, um, yep. Ice House were another They're one. My- oh, good choice. Yep. Um, Men at work make the list. No, you seem like you're in the men at work. But you seem you're in that men of work zone. Yeah, no, I, I didn't put them on my list. Um, okay, I've got Sia on my list because I, I like Sia, but again, like she's more of a, a now kind of Australian artist. Yeah, not, not yep. a twenty years ago. Um, Amy Shark, I don't mind Amy Shark as well now. Good. Yep. So then, if then we're sort of into the ones that I would have right at the top of my list, Guy Sebastian would be one of them. Um, Ooh, great singer, great uh, soul yeah. voice. Yeah, I, I just like his voice, um, quite a few of his songs. And then there's Savage Garden. Um, oh. where they were sort of they were 90s global. when I was in high school. Um, yeah. A lot of those songs take me back to high school girl. What is, the, so- like what is the song with Kirsten Dunst on the train? And I was like, damn, that's a – Oh, I don't oh. know that. In the American film clip for a song, I swear that Kirsten Dunst was the was the you know how like there's the, the film the video girl. This yeah. warrants a very quick Google search. I think it was on their second album where they relaunched a song like um every time you close my eyes, that, that one, I want you, I need you. And then the next thing was, oh my god, you guys are huge, we're gonna take you to America. 
Yeah. And there was like, they had this beautiful slow love ballad and Kirsten Dunst was in the film clip. I swear it, to so, God. So it could be, just Googling the two names, it could be I Knew I Loved You. That's it. I Knew I Loved You Before I Met You. Yeah. I yeah. think I Dreamed You Into Life. Yeah. So she was in that. That's yes. her. Yeah. Knew there it. Yeah, a bit of, bit of knowledge. I don't think, I probably didn't pay a lot of attention to film clips back then, but but I did like Savage Garden. And then it's, then it's, tight the the next two would probably be my favorite first one would be silver chair um Ooh. they were like big during that time again through the 90s that sort of thing and 1927 might be my favorite and that's because Ooh. we that takes me back to when i was a kid when i was 8 10 12 and we had a yeah. record player in the house and my parents would always have records playing, and 1927 was one of their favourites. So it's just burned into my brain, so I know every song off the album off by heart. Um, yeah. And, yeah, so 1927 or Silverchair are probably my two oh. favourites, I think. And, and Frog Stomp just obviously at the time was yeah. like, I don't think it, I don't think if you're, unless you were around for the 90s and you can just remember listening to Triple J and unearthed and what that did for music and the oz grungy music scene at the time there was there was nothing else like it like these mm. kids, like 14 15 year old kids whatever they were yeah. from newcastle yeah. and then this song like literally was australia's youth anthem mm. and yeah it was massive um i'm i'm back with you around that phase so um, favorite all time all time band um it's tough uh uh I'm, I'm whittling my list down. I could have had um, human nature as well. I do like human nature. Um, but, yeah, can not can only have a list that's so long. So I am I am just making sure these guys are Australian, to be fair, because I think there's a couple of members. You know when they're, like we have these random ones that we've got, like, two Australian guys and a couple of them are from New Zealand? Yeah. And that's what I'm going to ding Crowded House just slightly, by the way. The Finns, I don't know. Have yeah, we just claimed yeah. them? I think we've just claimed them. I'm, I'm well, another sure. one that I didn't put that we could claim and, and we sort of can is the Bee Gees. I just checked that one and I just canned them. I just oh, canned okay. it just on birthright. I canned them on birthright. I was going to say Bee Gees probably all time would be, I think, yeah. the biggest iconic one, I would say. Um, I think for me then, number one with the bullet has to be in excess. Um, yeah. I just – and I had the well, – I worked at a radio station on the Gold Coast. I don't know if anyone's in chat or listening. I should probably put comments on in case they are. Shout out to uh, shout like if they're listening to this content and be like, oh god, I'm from the Gold Coast. I know Hot Tomato. I used to work at a radio station on the Gold Coast called 1029 Hot Tomato, and we used to do these events. And one of them was the Walk of Fame, that's down at like Salt, um, just down over the Queensland border. Like there's this village resort and like resort, and they have this Australian Walk of Fame, and you get to like do this ceremony and give them their star kind of thing, like their plaque that goes on the walk of fame. And I got to host a couple of them. And one of them was, I got to induct Pat Rafter, the Veronica's and Kurt Pengilly from in excess. Hmm. And if, for those who don't know, Kirk is actually with like Lane Beachley, Australian surfing goddess. Yep. And they just hung out afterwards. And I probably spent two hours with the bloke, just chatting, having a couple of drinks, and he was the nicest guy in the entire world. So for that reason alone, number one yep. with the bullet. Uh, Powderfinger, probably yeah, another I, one. I that, forgot about them. Powderfinger, yeah. I love I love Powderfinger. I love Spiderbait back in the day. Like they were just like yeah. just great Aussie rock bands. Like you just turn on Triple J and go nuts to them. But I have a couple of modern ones I want to shout out to. Uh, Gang of Youths, I think, is one of the best modern Australian bands. Seeing them live, it's like a just incredible. So shout out to Gang of Youths. Um, but to some Australian dance music, uh, Rogue Traders. Yep. Natalie big fan. Bassingwaite. Yeah. Natalie Bassingwaite. But pre-Natalie, um, a guy called James Ash and I can't remember his other name. There's two. There was two DJs before Natalie came in um, where they did that In Excess remix. Huge. Uh, one of my kind, they did that remix. Uh, presets. Love the presets. Yep. Huge. Uh, and a Sydney DJ and producer and a fellow Hooper and a mate, uh, shout out to Hayden, who I've played basketball with uh, for a few years. Uh, Hayden James, a great modern Australian DJ and producer. Um, so, uh, yeah, those are probably my favourite Aussies. 
Yeah, I'm just having a look now that you've you mentioned dance music because I didn't even go down that rabbit hole, but I I, I went a little bit. I went a little rabbit hole here because clubbing in the '90s was that's I was all about that. So I I know a lot of Aussie, and, and I, if you were thinking of sort of mainstream ones, Madison Avenue, they had a lot Madison of, Avenue a lot of oh. good songs. But another band that I thought of, and we'll move to the next thing then because we could talk forever on this, is um, Killing Heidi. They were really good too. Oh, they were, and. Ella, Ella Hooper was like the first grungy girl I was ever like, marry me. Yeah. yeah, she was a bit like that, wasn't she? She was dreamy. She was lovely. She had that cute little, what's that? Like, because we're talking music, you know, Simon and Garfunkel, you can call me Al. Yep. There's this little roly poly little bat faced girl. There's a great line like that in the song. And she had that little, like, little little bat face girl nose to her. And I was like, yeah. the dreadlocks and the hot. I'm like, maybe, maybe yeah. I should get more tattoos. And <laughs> maybe I should just consider not like a very alternative lifestyle from what I'm currently yeah. living. Would that make you happy, Ella? And if it would, hi, my name is Matthew. And here, are my num- and here is my number. <laughs> here is my home phone number. Um- <laughs> my home You'll have to dial it by going around from, yes, and, and do the area code beforehand. So we'll do our player battles now. Um, yep. So uh, I did this with DMAC last year, uh, last week. So rather than having a look mm. at rest of season value because we don't have much of the season left, you know. I thought we'd look still look at the last three weeks, but then let's look at two players and discuss their value for next season. Um, so I feel like this might be a battle we've done this year for this year, but not for next year. Jamal Murray and Dejounte Murray. So have we done this? this yours, one? So I'll let you lead us off. We've done a lot of we've done a lot of same name ones, like which Jalen do we want and things like yeah. this. I didn't know if we'd done these two yet because I think this is based off our draft, our, your FBI, the, yeah. the Kingy Classic yeah. that I, I've, I've dubbed it the Kingy Classic. That's just what I'm calling it. Um, I'm going back into it now, and when I went through it, I wanted to just pull the data from that one, and I had a look around where I went, and in the third round. I think it was pick 30, what is it? That was so 24, uh, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 29. I've taken DeJounte Murray. 30 was Fred Van Fleet. And then 31 was Jamal Murray. And this got me thinking because I, I went with the whole thing when I was looking for playmaking. What is going to become of Atlanta next year? Because the Trey Young rumors have been out there now since the All Star break that the organization seems happy to trade Trey, and they've never said that statement before. So is it a case that we get one of these two guys moved? Because obviously before the trade deadline, the the name was DeJounte being moved. And then afterwards it's become, well, maybe Trey goes. And we get some massive haul back in return for that. We're already hearing talk about the Lakers next year, the Spurs next year, where the Ad Hawks can acquire the Lakers picks for 27 and 29. And the Spurs, they just have a shit ton of picks and they could give out their pick next year as well as salary cap. There's just a whole bunch of stuff going on over in San Antonio that they could get. And look, when you've got Trey Young, who's a really, really good rim protector, his name is Victor Wenbenyama. So this is based off looking what's happening now and what could hypothetically happen next year. And I really like what DeJounte Murray could bring back next year. So to do this, it has to go back to where have they been at for the year and what do we know of them historically? Well, Historically, this has actually been a very solid season for Jamal Murray. He's currently the 42nd ranked player, last year the 47th, and the year before that, uh, through injuries and his 48 games, uh, was the 59th best player. He has been fantastic. The peak of DeJounte Murray was the 21-22 season, where he was the third ranked player overall. Um, according to Basketball Monster, before he went to the Atlanta Hawks, last year was 53, and currently this year is 54. However, since Trey Young went down is where I wanted to lean with because this is what we could see possibly with this team and the young team next year. So DeJounte Murray in the last two weeks, giving it birth in six games, has been the 10th best player, 28 points a game, uh, four threes, four rebounds, eight assists a game, two steals, 460 and 830 from the floor. In the last month, he's been the 35th best player. Jamal Murray, conversely, has also been in the last week the 21st best player in the last two weeks. Looking at that, he has been the 11th best player, so not much disparity between them. So this is a guy who's obviously, so last two weeks, he's been the 23rd best player in per game value. 21 points, two threes, five rebounds, and eight assists as well. His, his assists have really gone up. 
So for me, it's like, which Murray do I want to take? Well, in the case of Trey Young leaving Atlanta or DeJounte going and getting greener pastures, I'm probably looking at maybe DeJounte for the first time that I would over Jamal. And I think that's where it's interesting because there seems to be a youth movement and I think it's happening across the board. And Jamal's not old, but I think it's the first time I've really thought, actually, you know what? Maybe he's not going to be that top three, top five, top 10 player. But if he's top 20 value on the season, DeJounte should, has really crept up my board next year in what he's showing me already. That, and that's where I'm at. Yeah, look, I think I think it's fair. I, I think, yeah, this the, the ultimately this depends on what they do with Trey Young. If Trey Young stays yep. and both he and DeJounte are there, I would go Jamal Murray. So if we ask this yep. question... Uh, two weeks out from the season, we know where they are. Yep. Now, if like I mean, in the draft we just did, um, I would also go Dejounte right now because I do think that Trey might be moved, or, or I, I'm just not sure they'll be together. And I think Jamal Murray isn't going anywhere. He is who he is. He's very good, yep. but I just don't think he has the ceiling that Dejounte has. Dejounte has been a first round player. We know what yep. he can do. He can give you a little bit more on the defensive end. Um, so I just think his ceiling is a bit higher. I think Jamal's floor is probably slightly safer. But it's a safe point, floor, 100%. I'd, I'd be going for – because Jamal is going to be somewhere in the top 30 to top 40. That That's generally where he where he's going to finish, um, whereas DeJounte could be top 50 or top 20. So – I'd probably just lean the upside of DeJounte Murray um, here in this one, but it is pretty close. And like I said, it, it would depend ultimately on what they do with Trey Young and, and what their team looks like next year. Um, and, and I wouldn't and I would envision a pathway, Kingy, where next year, if this talk happens again like it did this year, we actually see the Atlanta Hawks put on their big person pants and make a move at the deadline if they both return to the team at the beginning of the season. So this is where DeJounte Murray would become a really, really nice buy low target during the course of the season when he's operating beside Trey Young because I don't think if they don't succeed the way that they have this year, I don't think we come out of February and the All-Star break and the trade deadline with them both on the same team this time next year. And this is where DeJounte will get you that back if you if you get that trade at the right price. Yeah, I think so. Um, now, my matchup, which, again, you haven't seen – I haven't. This is a good one. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to bring I'm, – I'm, I'm going to the oh, – Ooh. If I could type. It's not Kristaps Prozingus. It's Kristaps Porzingis. Are you, no, no. Is that, like a, is that like a little – is that a tell that you're Prozingus? Maybe you it is. Maybe are, you it. Prozinga, are you Prozinga box? Look, maybe it was, but I'm not because I'd, I'd go Zion. Um, okay. Again, for upside. Um, yeah, this is probably a little bit recency bias because Zion has been incredible over the last few weeks. He's basically doing now what we've been waiting for him to do for four years. So he looks fit, he looks healthy, he looks motivated. The team are playing well. He's handling the ball. He's hitting his free throws. He's getting yep. assists. This is everything that we thought he could be. The sample yep. size is still quite small in the in the scheme of things, but a little bit like your matchup. I think we know exactly who Porzingis is at the moment. He's been really good. Uh, I'm not going to say that he hasn't been good because he's in nine cat leagues. He's the 18th ranked player this season. Um, I managed to draft him in a lot of leagues and he's been really good for me. So I'm certainly not against Porzingis, um, but I just feel like, and if we look at the the draft, where are we? Where he are went 36. I've got it up here. So he went at the end yep. of the third round. He went to uh, S-Man Sports at yep. 36. And that actually corrects me before. Jamal Murray went two picks before. I did I did the snake the wrong way. So Jamal Murray went at 31, and I took DeJounte at 33 for next okay. year. So yep. I thought that's where I started to get value because then I hit LeBron James on my next pick after that one. Uh, KP's gone off at 36. And 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. 47 was Zion, which is, you'd say right now, just an absolute a bargain. 
Yeah, yeah. And as I said, there's a bit of recency bias there because he has been so good. Um, but, yeah, I think I'd just go, I mean, I'm probably a sucker for, for guys like this and it probably come back to bite me. But if I was picking at, say, pick 30 next year and both were on the board, I think I'd probably go the upside of Zion. The free throws still worry me. I'm still not convinced that he's a he's a great free throw shooter. But if he can get up to 75 77%, then he won't drag you down like he has. And we've seen that from Luca this year. Luke, that's always been the the negative when it comes to Luka Doncic and his fantasy value, but he's he's close to 80% this year and he's the fifth ranked player because of it. So yeah. um, and on the volume, and on the volume that these guys yeah. get, because Luca draws a lot of fouls. I mean, they're starting to adjudicate differently as well, which makes me think about drafting differently based on the volume of free throws. Like we're down to the lowest free throws we have been in 70 years of basketball. Like they've really made a move for the physical game to come back. So analytically, I look at, okay, well, if the volume's going to go away, there's not so much of a deficit to Luca because he's not going to get, he's trying to initiate that contract and get, to, and it's not going to get, but Zion just, he doesn't need to initiate contact. He just gets contact because of the way that he plays bully ball. Like he's a lot more bully, like circa 2013, LeBron James, like going to the cup than, than Luca is, where Luca is very cagey, whereas Zion is just physically a force. So if he can boy that, man. I drafted him and traded him away when he wasn't playing well to begin this season yep. in a trade that involved Jaron Jackson Jr. And my opponent hat is flying. In the past two weeks, Zion is the 12th best player. Like he's exceeded even my expectations when I drafted him because what's always going to be, Kingy, do you still think the recency bias of now is great, but do you still think we get chubby or chunky Zion rumors in the off season or that he's not that fit or that he's motivated and he becomes a bargain because he slides? Is, is that still possible? Or do you think now is the season that next year we see him come back into being going in the first three rounds? Yeah, I think it, for me it probably – comes down to whether he ends the season healthy or injured because that yep. seems to sort of um, dictate what his off season looks like if he cuz yeah if he comes into and he's just injured he's i guess motivation has been an issue or it's been talked about as being an issue for him and um if he ends the season healthy and they well they're going to make the playoffs but if they make the second round and they get beaten by I don't know Denver or or someone in 4-2 It'll be like, okay, we're right there. And and he will see that we're close, we're where we need to be, and he'll be motivated then coming into next season. Um, so that would also determine obviously who I would go with here, because if you are hearing those rumors of he's out of shape or he's he's done his hamstring again or something like that, then I'd probably go with Porzingis, who believe it or not, you would take him because he's not as at much of an injury risk, which we wouldn't normally say about Chris Stapp's Porzingis, but yeah. Um, yeah, probably Zion for me at the moment, but again, that that could change. And I've just done the um, the calculations. Zion, this is how good he has been, even from the free throw lately. Like you said, without free throws in the last two weeks, he is the twelfth best player without considering free throw percentages of punt category. With punts, he's actually the tenth best player. Mm. So that just shows you how much he his that is tied to basically. His what would you say? His free throw percentage being decent, and that's two positions in a top ten that this year has been fantastic. Is that's value? Like if he's going in the, you've got him in this draft towards the end of the fourth round, and the people around him. This is what's crazy if you think about the guys that went before and after him. Before him was Demar Derozan, and that's the safest houses pick. Devin Vassell with the pick before that, Jalen Brown, Derek White, and Mikhail Bridges. And I've got to say, I'd prefer Zion over McCall any day of the week. The next guy off the board after him was Franz Wagner, Julius Randle, into uh, Drew Holiday. So, mate, getting him towards the end of the fourth round, Noah Rubin got him, which was a snipe on you, taking yep. into Franz. I, I would have feel that would have been a snipe because I know that you mm -hmm. actually went to a New Orleans Pelicans game this year and, and loved that experience. So, yeah, I think, I think he's definitely making his way up my big boy. He's definitely... I, I've started to put. I've, I've done my top forty for next year, and I have Zion in my top forty. Yeah. So, uh, I have him. Um, I think at last thing I had him at thirty-two. 
And I'm not even thinking about moving him down from there. I, I'm, I'm probably going to, he's probably going to hit the twenties very, very soon. Yeah. Just, just to see how he finishes it, just to see how he finishes the year. I'm, 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 I'm hesitant until I see him finish healthy and yeah. be healthy in the optimism. Yep. Yep. There is hesitation there, of course, but the upside is undeniable and, and we've actually seen it for a somewhat sustained period over the last couple of weeks. So, 100%. um, so we've probably got about 10 minutes till we need to get out of here. So I just thought we'd quickly run through our our teams from my early mock draft. Yeah. So here we go with your team. So it was oh, a it's mine. Yeah, yeah. So we'll start with yours. So it was a um it was a 14 team league. Yeah. Uh, and we I only went 10 rounds, so I didn't go too deep um because it, it is just a mock. So talk us through your team here and, and any thoughts on specific players. Oh, g'day. Uh, Life of Cuz just jumped in chat and g'day to him as well. Uh, Life of Cuz always joins us. He's jumped in halftime from the footy. Go the pies. Uh, well done to him. Look, this is my team and I'm and I'm happy with it. Uh, I, mate, I tell you now, when you have a 14 team league that is just absolutely chock full of the analysts like that we had in this one, you kind of, I don't know, did you second guess yourself at all at any point in time? Because when you pick after seven, I'm always second guessing myself like, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to base it off? So straight away to read through my thinking behind it in my first pick, I took uh, DeMontis Sabonis because I wanted to make sure that I'm getting someone, no matter what, that's going to give me rebounds or assists. I wanted to have the choice on the turn to come back around to me who I could base it off. The man is a walking double-double machine. Any day of the week, I'm going to get like a 18, 10, and an and 8, or I'm going to get an 18, 20, and, and 12. So I know I've got a really good base there. So I think Sabonis has always been a really sol solid base. I did toy with Chet Holgren here and Anthony Davis, and I let them go. But in a 12-team league next year, I mark my words that if I can get Anthony Davis and pair him with Chet Holgren, that's just giving the big middle finger straight to the number one pick in Victor Wembanyama. I'm like, oh, you you want to get the blocks? Well, let's play. Mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's a really nice dance to counter Wembanyama next year if he's going number one. Obviously, he's getting six or seven a game, but that's me. The next one I wanted to pair that up with is I wanted to get solid stats again and feed those ones. So I went James Harden with my next pick um, around the board. And then I started to flirt with, okay, I've got a guard. I've got a forward and center eligible player in Sabonis, which I like that dual flexibility for him. I'm going to lean into those guard stats. And this is where with that next pick, I've gone, you know what? In this next year, hypothetical reality, DeJounte Murray is the point guard by himself in Atlanta. And to get him at 38 is nothing but value, which brought me to my next pick, LeBron James at 47. Um, I couldn't believe it. I was like, surely LeBron's not going to be there at 38. And he was. And I couldn't believe it. And I couldn't believe that he was still there after that at 47. So I've just, I've got to take the man. Like he's an unstoppable force of basketball. The man's been a top 25 player all year. And so when he, it's it's like I just drafted the next best guy on my board and that's it. Uh, Jared Allen, I just love the bloke. I think he's had, look, he's had spates this year with top 10 value. Like we all saw that earlier this year. He was a top five player at one point. It was ridiculous. So he's going to be my traditional center that weighs my team, like that anchors my team there. Emmanuel quickly has proven to be a top 30 player in the last month of basketball. Um, and he's fitted in very well at Toronto when I see them on a similar path next year. So I think that this exceeds his ADP. Austin Reeves, I wanted a guard and forward eligible player who could feed me in all. And also he's my handcraft to LeBron James. So at the end of the day, I was like looking at that. He's around his value. He's not better or not worse. And Tobias Harris, who I like to call Houses Harris. Look, the guy has been in and out of the lineup and lately in Philadelphia, I don't know what's going on there. If it's even a semi-tank job at this point, just to be like, look, we're going to have to go through the play-in. We don't know if Joel is going to be back, but look, I love Tobias Harris. He has, he has exceeded everyone's expectations this year. So to see him at 103, delighted. Wendell Carter Jr. I see is having a bit of a uh, resurgence next year. So I want another center to feed that. And Grayson Allen, I, I could not believe that he was still on the board considering that in the last... You know, a little while, he's been the seventh best player in fantasy in the last two weeks. And he's been just incredible in Phoenix this year. And also Alex Reclean was picking two picks after me. And I wanted to make sure that Alex Reclean didn't take him. Yep, that's fair. We don't want to let Alex get any of his guys. He I, did get I one didn't, Kessler. 
he did get Walker Kessler, which I think was the absolute masterstroke. And the reaction that first pick that you and him organized was an absolute, like yeah. the way that you did that. And Josh Lloyd saw that within like two seconds of Alex posting was just the most priceless thing I could think of. It was, it was just the reaction we were looking for. Uh, so I'll run, well, life of cars with a question while he's uh, spending his half time in the footy. And for anyone that, that is watching us instead of the footy, Collingwood are leading St Kilda by eight points at Half time, True. Uh, and in the rugby league, Penrith are demolishing Brisbane. So twenty-two to two at half time, um, oh. which is great because like I have Nathan Cleary in my super coach team. So well, I have Nathan Cleary in my super coach team. I benched him to play Nico out today on the. Uh, holy shit, Beans! I've got Nico. Uh, Jesus, Mother Mary! I, I traded in off uh, Matrixes from uh, Insight. He's like put Cleary on the bench and put a. Uh, and put Nico in versus the Tigers, your mate. Absolutely. Yep. Good idea. And, and, Nico is my captain this week against the Tigers. Okay. Nico is my captain against the Tigers this week, thanks to good our move. Matrix. So yep. good move. And clear is on the bench and he's already got 96. So you can just think we're stuck like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, yeah I have him on my bench, but he is one of my reserves. So, so right. clear he is still in my active lineup. Um, do you think Tobias keeps his value on a new team? So if he was to move next season, uh, yep. do you think he keeps his value? I think I'm the highest in – am I the highest analyst in the world on Tobias Harris? At this point, I think yes. I am. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I am. And you know what? That's going to be my lane. And one day I'm going to sit down with a beer with uh, Tobias and be like, I, I was in your corner, mate. I was in your corner the whole bloody time. Um, I do. I think Tobias Harris is a good basketball player. I think Tobias Harris is the kind of role player that a lot of teams in the NBA would like. And if you look back at his value, he's been this year – Look, in this year, he's been the 63rd ranked player overall, and this has been dinted considerably with his outs lately. So he was a top 40 player. He has lost a lot of value the last month with being out of the lineup. That has dinged him. And also, look, I don't know what's going on there, but it's not positive. I think they're very much in their fields in Philadelphia, and that's impacted his game. Last year, he was 59. The year before that was 61. The year before that was 30. Like, just go back historically – to see a guy like him still coming in the top 120s, it's like Chris Paul. Everyone's like, oh, Chris Paul's going to suck this year. The guy hasn't finished outside the top 75 ever in fantasy basketball. So, yeah, at a point, I think there's just a good – like you said before, Kingy, there's floor guys. Hmm. Ours is Harris is, is, is a really stable floor. So I think he keeps some value and some relevance, but I see when he slides out. If you see Tobias Harris on your board at 100, you take him. You, you just take him because he's the best one of the best players on the board at that point. Yeah, and he's the only 31 still. I think people think he's sort of 34, 35. He's not. He, yeah. He'll be 32 when next season starts. But hypothetically, he's still got another two two good years um, yep. of top top 80, top 60 value. So, yeah, I don't mind him there. You are probably higher on him than me, but I think he's fine there. I think he's very safe. So I like my sexy floor guys. I like my sexy marble tile guys. I like, you know, I like those yep. sexy floor guys when you can get them late and be like, you know what? You're not going to fuck me up. You're, you're going to actually help me, and I'll, I'll run with that there. My team, Nikola Jokic. So I got pick three. Wemby did go at one. Uh, Shea yep. went at two to Skiddy, and then I I had to take Jokic at three. Yep. Doncic would be my only other consideration there, but but Jokic is just so safe that I, that I had to go with him. Um Went with Jalen Brunson uh, at pick 26. Uh I don't think he can really beat this value, but he is a, one of those floor guys. I think just we, we've seen this season he's been really good. He's he's taken his game to that next level. Um, then I went for some upside with Cade Cunningham at pick 31, a guy that hasn't reached this level yet. Um, whether he does that next year, I think he's dependent on how good Detroit are next year. Uh, if they're mildly competitive, then I think he can probably push top 40, top 30. Yep. Franz Wagner at 54, I think that that I would have taken Zion there, but as you said, no, I took him ahead of me, so I went with Franz. And and Franz, I'm pretty high on Franz. I think he can be top, top 35 at some point, like a third round. Um, Orlando are just – they're trending in the right direction, and he's a key yep. piece of what they're doing. Um, and then a pretty similar player in some regards, Miles Bridges at 59, which is bang on where he is this season. He's about a top 60 player. A little bit of concern here, depending on where he is next season, because 
he's obviously been able to play well this year on a Charlotte team that doesn't have a lot of talent. Yeah. So if he was to go to a better team, he probably struggles to be a top 50, top 60 player, but I'm okay taking him here because we've seen multiple seasons where he's been able to, to beat this value. Yeah. Uh, Onyeko Kongwu at 82, just constantly waiting for for that moment when he steps into the starting role and and maybe they do trade away Trey Young and and with Jalen Johnson and DeJounte and at Kongwu, they hit the reset button and just say, this is our core now um, yeah. and move off of a of uh, Clint Capella. So, And we've seen them of- do that. We've seen Quinn Snyder do that before over in Utah. So that would be a very Quinn Snyder move. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's what I'm looking for here. Kongu, um, his floor is probably top 100 um, as long as he's getting upwards of 20 minutes. But He's he been 60th finally- this year. He's been 60 okay. this year, Kingy. Yeah. Like, so I go. actually love I actually love that pick for you. I actually had him in my radar uh, on this comeback around. He was in my queue, and I was like, damn it, Kingy took him. Yeah. No, no, I think he, he was good. And just before he got that injury, he was starting. He was playing big yeah. minutes. And so I'm hoping next year is the year. Terry Rose year at 87, I'm really not excited about that pick at all. Um, <laughs> I don't actually know why I made it. I, I think that that area of the draft, once you get – sort of beyond pick 75 it just gets a bit barren you're looking for guys that can be top 50 players and there's just not many of them there mm-hmm. terry rosier i think has looked a bit better in miami the last yeah. little bit so i feel like he, he he'll be at least a top 100 top 90 player even playing in miami uh bogdan bogdanovich who who this season wasn't even being drafted in a lot of leagues, and and he's been I want to say what a player this year, what a what a fantastic player this year. Uh, Sixty six man of the year, nine cat, yeah, um, yeah. He was six man of the year candidate before the Trey Young thing. He was like right up there. He would he would have been my six man of the year initially until Trey Young went out and he got some more starting minutes. And yeah. I think that moves it to Malik Monk, you know, being one of yeah. those kind of guys now. But yeah, Bogdan's been brilliant. Yeah, really good. Um, coming off that World uh, World Cup performance, um, so I like Bogdan there. I think I think that's a really nice pick. Cam Johnson, again, he's I don't know. I'm not excited about that one, but I like to think that maybe this has just been an off season with some injuries and yeah. ups and downs, and playing on a Brooklyn team that's just trash. So maybe there's scope. He's still quite young. Um, so I'd like to think that he could be a top 100 player next season. And then I auto-drafted. the. I didn't even realise I was on the clock. I think there were some fan tracks things going on. And, and so I drafted Andrew Wiggins, but I don't want Andrew Wiggins. So I dropped him and picked up Malik Monk. So this is who I would have taken, um, yep. Malik Monk. Another guy like, um, like Bogdan, a really good sixth man. Uh, he's been... Key for the um, for the for Sacramento over the last few weeks. Uh, he's playing, despite playing as the sixth man, he's basically playing starters minutes uh, every night. Just pulling up his game log here. Um, yeah, not not in the last game because they beat Toronto by about a thousand points. But prior to that, he's basically playing thirty minutes a night. He can get you twenty points, five assists, the odd steal. He'll hit threes. He's Awesome from the free throw line. So I think getting Monk here at 138 is great because I think he's going to be a, a really nice piece for Sacramento long term. So I was okay with my team. A couple of picks that I wasn't too excited about, but but generally I was okay with it. Um, and, and this is where I round out after that with Markel Fultz, who I actually thought you were going to take because I know that you love Markel yeah. Fultz. And then, yep. King took, uh, and then you took him. Skitty took uh, Markel next. And then Josh Hart rounded out the uh, the picks there at 140. Obviously, 14 players, 10 teams deep. What I actually don't know if you've chopped up yet is guys who are still left on the wire. And yep. this is the, this is the this is I had a, I did prepare an actual question. It was this one. Of all the players that were left, who were you most surprised was left on the wire at the end after 140 deep? Um. Given, given it's an, an analyst league, there weren't too many. Um, yep. Because I think analysts are going to 
already be doing their research for next year. And so they'll be looking at guys' production this year or over the last month or, or whatever it is and, and put it into context and go, yeah, I actually don't think this is sustainable. Um, oh, who's on there? I'm looking through it now. Um, top, na- top names include guys like uh, Norm Powell, another six-man of the year candidate at that back end. Yeah. Uh, Keldon Johnson, Buddy Heald was one of the ones that for me was the outlier. I saw Buddy Heald completely yeah. drift off and I was like, oh, I, okay. Like I was considering maybe I could round back and pick him up. Uh, but then again, you start to hit in an analyst league. Like this is the thing with Ayo Desumu. I saw him there and I'm like, Jesus, it sucks to God that Zach Levine's going to be healthy next year and back because yeah. I would just love it in a world where Ayo Desumu is getting drafted. He's been a revelation. Oh, look, if if I think, yeah, if we knew he was going to start, he'll be drafted, but we know that Zach Levine will come back. We know that Lonzo Ball is running again. so Which is amazing. He's, He's training with the team. Chance. How great is that? Yeah, so if he could be back as well. Um, so I just don't see the role for Desunmu, as good as he's been. Um, yeah. I, I just, yeah, it's not there at the moment. So... There's not a lot of names on that list left. If I sort of scroll down the list and go, I wouldn't be surprised if these guys are waiver wire guys. Um, in saying that, there was, we, there we did was only one go 140 deep. So there, that, this is true. The the one that I was like more interested in for the full season that I was most shocked by because he's. I, I've just got to give a shout. I'm just checking his season rank currently, and I was like, this guy surely we surely we should have taken him, Mike Connolly. I just – shout out to Mike Conley. I know he's, like, at the 150s this year, but, Jesus, I would love to take Mike Conley with the last pick. I like Mike Conley. Shout out to Mike Conley for just being, like, the man in the room to help get the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves on the uh, on the winning ways this year. I think he's I think he's been integral to their team, to be fair. I, I think you could argue he's the most important player. Um, not Obviously not from a production standpoint because they've yep. got Anthony Edwards, they've got Carl Anthony Towns. But in terms of when he's not there, you can you just know that the it's team there. loses their direction, they lose their heads. So he needs to be healthy for them in the playoffs for them to do anything, I think. And um, I, I I drafted him. I think I took him in oh, but probably two thirds of my leagues with my last pick this year. Um, not needing him to do anything other than get assists and steals and a few threes and some points. And he's averaging six assists, one steal, 2.23s, 91% from the free throw line, doing exactly what I needed him to do. Um, he's played 64 games, so he's been relatively healthy. So, yeah, he was probably the guy I looked at here when I jumped back in and picked up Malik Monk. It was him and Mike Conley. They were the two that I was looking at. So, um, um, And also and another shout-out too to uh, B-Dub from FBI Basketball before we answer your question, Gibbo. Hello. Uh, he jumped in chat before. Not in chat, he commented on our post online, and it was Living End, Grinspoon, and Powderfinger. So he backed up the pink. But, yeah, Grinspoon and Living End, too. Yeah, Living End, I actually. When I read that, I thought, oh, yeah, Living End were, yeah. were good too. So Yeah, good um, shout there, mate. So Gibbo asks, if Jalen Smith leaves in free agency, is Isaiah Jackson rosterable in an 18 to 20 minute per game role? Yeah, well, yes. I mean, if, if Isaiah Jackson's playing 20 minutes a night, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just not sure it happens. Um, I guess if Jalen Smith leaves, but that would mean Miles Turner would only be getting 28 minutes a night, which I know the Pacers aren't afraid to bench him for whatever reason. Um, yeah. So yes, I think so. I think if we come into next season and it's it's clear that Isaiah Jackson is the backup, then he'd be someone to consider with a last pick just to see how many minutes he gets. And, and currently, right now, uh, Jalen Smith is on eighteen minutes a night, and he's the one forty seventh ranked player. So yeah. to give you context, it depends on your Gibbo on your your league and on your depth. Uh, if he's the backup and he's getting majority, but again, we've seen them not give Isaiah minutes when Jalen's been out. So there just always seems this hesitancy not to roll him out more than a certain amount of time. They'll give more minutes to Obi Toppin in that case, and then Obi Toppin goes up in value. I just I just never know what the value is, but if he can carve out a decent 18 to, to 20 minute a night roll, yeah, he, he definitely becomes rosterable with the last pick. Yeah, he does. So I'm just pulling up his uh, his box score. So I mean, he's 
He's in and out of the lead, uh, in and out of the lineup. That that's the as you said, the issue here is we've just never really seen the the team confident enough to give him consistent minutes. Uh, yeah. He's more of a sort of a spot minutes guy who will play in a favourable matchup. But I mean, in his last game, um, well, it, it, against Detroit um, today or yesterday, he had a double double with six assists and three steals. Yeah. Um, We've seen he's had a few double doubles. Um, he gets he's had a lot of multiple block games. So, yeah, look, I mean, per thirty six, we, we know how good he is. And if you look at his yeah. per thirty six stats for the season, he's a first round player. So he he only needs to get, as we know, probably twenty minutes, um, twenty minutes a night. But at the moment, he's only getting. 13 minutes a night, and he's he's a top 200 player in 13 minutes a night. So there you go. I mean, you bump that up by, what, 50%, yeah. then he, yeah, he moves huge. probably inside the top 130, 120 um, yeah. pretty comfortably. So, And if he's still there in the last peak, that's where you get the value. Oh, you're like, he's, yeah. here, at one, he's here at 140? Oh, laughing. And then especially if that's what's going to happen and you see that happen in the preseason, he'll be one of those names that's flirted with as, uh, yeah. as value for next year. Yep, I think so. Um, I'm going to let you go, uh, and I'm going to go and have some hot cross buns. Oh. Um, because Are you a butter and jam person? Butter just, and the jam? No, jam on a hot cross bun. No, I'm not. Wait, no? Wait, what, you've never done jam on a hot cross bun? No, I haven't. No. What are you? Really? Just butter. No. Mate, I didn't even break know that out. was a thing. Mate, you, you're crazy not to use the conserve. You need to break out the uh, IXL. Yeah, no, strawberry jam. I, I grew up with a... Uh, I grew up with a, a grandmother that would have fresh homemade jam, uh, yep. blackberry blackberry jam, just yep. low key blackberry jam, or like the, one of those like mulberry kind of jams, you know yeah, those, yeah. yeah, those berries. One of those on a hot cross bun with hot melted butter, deluxe, like okay. the dream. All right, I'm going to go and pull the pull the jam out of the fridge then and have a couple couple of hot cross buns with with jam. I'm about to record a pod and I expect to have a direct message from you on Twitter or on text telling me how good you like it because oh, yeah. jam on a hot cross bun is elite. Okay, there you go. I've learned something new today. I'm going to go and try that. Um, get the cats to bed, get the kids to bed. Uh, insight, what's coming up over the next few weeks, a um, oh, couple of months? It's huge. Um, look, the AFL and NRL seasons, like we were talking earlier, have kicked off. Shout out to... Uh, Braino Whisperer, and of course, my man Matrix, who helped me with my uh, Super Coach NRL lineup. Uh, huge lineup over in the AFL as well with uh, Skitty, who you know, and Big Horse. Uh, Big Horse leads that up with Skitty and Herbie each week. So we've got your sports covered there in NBA. We've still got four shows a week going on. We've got the crossover on Sunday, Monday for your weekly preview. I'm about to jump on and do the chase down where we talk about the weekends. Saturday morning live uh, this week, 8 a.m. Kingy, come along. It's 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 an all open. I haven't invited anyone. People just get asked, do you want to come? Do you want us to come on or not? I'm like, sure, why not? It's just an open, free chat on a Saturday morning where we like to talk basketball and how to win your leagues and stuff that's going on, things that we've noticed. So I do that with Skitty. Uh, you can check him out at Skitty IFS on Twitter. Uh, as well. Um, yeah, mate, we've got heaps of content coming up. And the big thing is our Discord, uh, our Unlimited channel, where we give personal feedback and on people's tips and on their team. So jump in on that one and, and check out the Discord as well. It's going great. And the new Insight merch, the hat, the shirt, um, yep. a little plug for the, for the, the stuff there. So I've got to, if, if you want one, just DM me and I'll just give people stuff. Like we'll, we'll just we'll just make it and print it. We're going to put it up on the website. We've got a website coming soon in development. We're going to have a little bit of a web store with some good gear um, yep. coming up. But just, yeah, it's it's fun. We, we, we love our fantasy sport. And look, in Australia, like you know, Kingy, it's NRL and AFL season just kicks off. Like Life of Cuz is just tapping into fantasy basketball, but he's, he's, he's rolling himself into AFL right now, which is what yep. us Australian, which is, just, which is what us Australian blokes do this time of year. So, you know, the fantasy the fantasy basketball is on the trend, and then we'll do our end-of-season review, which will come with an end-of-season kit. So I'm doing all 30 teams, 10 players from each team that I've liked, full season stats for each team, and I'm going to do a published book. I'm just going to publish a book out there, basically, for everyone for free, and it's called the end of, it's like the end-of-season report. So that'll go out to everyone uh, in the next, uh, yeah, next six weeks, basically, and that'll be basically my pre-draft guide for next year um, to be like, where where has this... With the questions for next year off this, and that'll launch us into next year. 
Yeah, so keep an eye out for that. Lots of good content. Uh, we've got um, – we don't do all the other sports, obviously, but we've got uh, plenty of Dynasty stuff coming up over the next few weeks and then and then obviously over the, the off-season with Noah and Matt. Um, our playoff leagues, I believe, will be launching very soon, as soon as fan tracks allow us to go in and set them up. That We still can't set them up, um, but we usually run uh, – well, multiple. What I think maybe yeah, 50, guys, yeah. fifty of those. So, yeah. so we'll be running a lot of playoff leagues, best ball leagues, all sorts of things. Um, that'll then, as soon as the season's done, we'll be launching our draft only leagues for next year. Um, never too early to do a draft. If anyone knows me, I'm happy to draft any time of the year. So, we'll have plenty of those going as well. Um, and then, yeah, moving into next season and getting some player notes ready and, and maybe a draft guide. I don't know. I'm flirting with the idea of it, depending on time. <laughs> um, so, yeah, plenty of stuff coming out despite the season coming to an end. Um, keep an eye out for it. Follow Maddie at NBAG Wiz. Follow me at Adam King 91 We are at FBI Basketball as well. Uh, B-Dub, who we know is watching along, is at Hidden Upside, yeah, so you can fo- follow him and, and we'll be um, – We'll have all the information about our leagues and stuff like that. And, um, and shout out to you, King, as well. I love your uh, your weekly show that you do with uh, Mike Fiddle, I believe it is. Uh, I do one with Matrix every week as a weekly preview. I think just two of the best co-piloted weekly shows there are, to be honest. I just think it's good chat every single week. So, yeah, make sure you check out everything. I'm not even part of the FBI team. So make sure if you're not checking out inside stuff, you check out everything Fantasy Basketball International because it's good. Yeah, and, and look, I mean, honestly, follow everyone that does stuff. Roto yeah. World are doing stuff. Roto Wire, Josh um, yep. does all of his stuff as well. So there's plenty of content out there, which some of it will start to those, slow down. But yeah, yeah, go everyone. into those four. Yeah, go into those fourteen people that we were talking about from Kingy's Classic Draft before. Like they're all good people. Uh, there's Kayla and Mac who jumps on this yep. show as well. Just people who love, just people who love basketball, and the analyst world is full of them. So if you love your basketball, shout out to those who love it too. That will do it then for today. Um, thumbs up, subscribe, uh, all of that stuff. Um, we're on we're on YouTube. We're on Twitter. Obviously, a lot of people watching on Twitter, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you consume your podcast content. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in tonight. Go and watch the footy now. That's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to go and have some hot cross buns with Jam. Until Thank next you. time, catch up. Take care. You just listened to another episode from the Fantasy Basketball International Podcast Network. Thanks for joining us. And for more information about joining our community, please check out our website at fbibasketball.com.